it's such a privilege um, in times like these to be talking about agriculture's contribution um, to the economy after the year that we had in 2020, um, how the current year is going. But as Herman said, we really want to look today about at what underpinned this growth, why did we see such good performance, and then looking forward, how sustainable is that growth? I want to start first just to look at that contribution. I think it's been mentioned that it's often underrated, um, and I think the statistic that everyone knows fairly well is that primary agriculture is roughly 2% um, of South Africa's economy. Uh, maybe lesser known is that if you add the agro-processing to that, you get another 5%, so that's that's quite a, a, a massive um, inflation already as to the number that, that is, is normally quoted and normally known. But in addition to that, I think, you know, there's so much more that the sector contributes than just growth um, and, and just economic performance. So if one looks, you know, from an employment perspective, it's agriculture is responsible for 7% and, and the agro-processing sector further 3%. Um, if you look towards international trade, um, just to mention 2020, exports of almost 11 billion US dollars, Imports of, of six and a half, but at a, at a, in a net position, looking at a trade surplus of, of 4.4 billion US dollars, so a lot of foreign revenue there coming from the sector. Um, and then finally, also just in terms of um, its interconnectedness with the rest of the of of the economy, um, I think if there's one thing that COVID showed us, it was the extent of of support sectors that are involved and related to agriculture somehow. And also how big the contribution is from the informal sector, so to speak, um, not only from a distribution perspective and from a marketing perspective, but also in terms of primary production. And this is often underrated and, and often not well quantified. If we just look at one example of that, um, I'm showing some work that we've recently done for the pork sector. Now, this is one of the smaller sectors in, in South Africa's agricultural economy. Um, but just looking at a triangulation of different data sets, um, we try to quantify how big that informal pork production is. Um, and if you look at the chart on the left, um, it suggests that roughly 20, 27,000 tons of pork is produced in this sector and consumed in this sector. That would suggest that the formal statistics are, are roughly 10% um, of that is, is not really being counted in terms of, of that informal sector, which we don't normally see in those statistics. If you look to the right, we're just looking at where those pigs are, um, where the households are that produce pigs, um, and these are your smaller producers then. We're looking at almost 900,000 pigs. That's roughly 40% of the standing stock in South Africa that is, is attributed to this informal side, and in excess of 200,000 households. Um, so that's a, a major contribution, not only in terms of, of income. A lot of this moves. It's sold in the community, so it doesn't necessarily move through formal channels. Um, but also in terms of food security, providing access to protein to many lower income consumers, many more rural areas um, that sometimes struggle to afford protein. Um, so making a good contribution there in terms of, of production value, but also in terms of, of food security. If we then look more towards the, the actual economic performance, um, the statistic on the left, that's a picture borrowed from Stats SA, and I, I think most would have seen it by now. Um, but in 2020, which was really a difficult year, agriculture was, was a shining light. Apart from government services, it was the only sector that contributed positively to economic performance. Um, and it was a substantial contribution at that, growing 13% year on year um, compared to 2019. So there were many reasons for that. Some of them, undoubtedly, that food sectors, you know, being an essential service was not affected to the same extent as the rest of the economy by, through, by the lockdown. Um, but it also traded in, in difficult circumstances and, and took a lot of effort from across the value chain and a lot of collaboration to make things work in, in what was a difficult time um, from, a, from a logistic perspective um, and to sort a lot of bottlenecks in the value chain to keep the sector functioning. I think the depreciation in the exchange rate was also important. But then we also saw things like changing demand patterns um, as a result of the lockdown and things completely unrelated to, to COVID, things like our bumper maize crop, um, which showed resilience after two years of drought, but, all, but then produced, uh, um, you know, the second largest harvest on record. Prices were good with the weaker exchange rate. Um, and then we saw sectors like citrus, which is benefiting from multiple years of, of investment into the sector to export record volumes at a time when logistics was particularly challenging. That's not to say parts of the sector didn't, were not negatively affected, um, 
I'm thinking of sectors like wine, for instance, which was affected by multiple um, sales restrictions, sectors like tobacco, um, non-food sectors like flowers and cotton, um, all of which did not perform as well as what we saw the bigger sector perform. If we then just look at agricultural GDP over time, taking a bit of a longer term view, we're showing on screen now the real agricultural GDP from 2000 um, all the way through to 2030, what our projections are. And I think the first striking thing is just the volatility around that. So it's obviously the sector, you know, being closely tied to weather and, and multiple other sectors. It tends to be more volatile than most. Um, there's a lot of peaks in history, typically also periods of consolidation thereafter. And I think if one starts to unpack a little bit the reasons for the growth spurt, so to say, you know, it's often sometimes it's, it's international, sometimes it's domestic factors. If we look to 2001, two, we had a big upswing in terms of volumes. We had a depreciation of the exchange rate. But then if one looks to that period from 2012 through to 2016, there was also just a period of sustained investment in, in high growth, high value horticultural sectors, um, which benefited the sector. There was also ex exogenous factors, factors outside of South Africa. If you look to seven, 2007, 2008, when oil prices increased sharply, biofuels entered the fray. We also had a lot of growth in China, big demand for, for animal feeds that supported global price levels and, and in turn also South Africa. A few years after that, we had consecutive droughts in the U.S., um, which also supported prices at a time when South Africa had reasonable volumes, so that supported performance. And then if you look towards 2020 and, and this year that we're currently in, we again have a combination of, of weaker exchange rate, big volumes, um, and in many instances, strong global prices. And I think if we look back again to history, many times these peaks were followed by some consolidation. So we had the, the global financial crisis, the associated recession, which influenced demand um, in 2009-10. We had more recently, we had um, the influence of animal disease, uh, we had prolonged drought periods, but things like avian influenza, foot and mouth disease, all of which influenced um, the animal sector. And if we look ahead to the short term, we also expect some consolidation over the next two to three years following this, this good growth that we've seen now. That's in part due to a normalization of world prices, but also with consumer incomes being a bit strained in South Africa, that, that does limit um, the demand side. The question we should really be asking, though, isn't um, how, what does the, the business as usual scenario look like going forward, which is what we're presenting here. But the question is, how do we bend that upwards? Um, what actions can we take and what can we do to accelerate that growth to get the blue line up to the green dotted line that you see there? And I think that's a little bit what we would like to discuss today. So if we just take a subsector view then, um, again on the chart on the left, we're looking at, at gross income, um, gross production value from, from the three major subsectors, so field crops, animal, horticulture. So the smallest one of the lot now is field crops, and that's also the most volatile, historically, the one most dependent on weather. Um, but if one looks to 2020 and 2021 in particular, you'll see just how good the current year is for that sector. So we've had a very good year in terms of production volumes. And global markets are strong, so we're seeing good prices realized as well. On the animal front, we saw fairly sustained growth all the way up to 2017. Um, but then we had some challenges with animal disease, as mentioned. In the short term, um, that sector is probably most affected by the, by the weaker demand. And we're also in a bit of a, a cycle of rebuilding there, which, which implies that we'll see growth in future. But in the short term, the supply is a little bit constrained. The third one then is horticulture. Um, that's also a sector that grew most rapidly of all over the past decade, um, a lot of that driven by exports. Um, we saw wonderful export performance in 2020. Um, 2021 volumes also looking good, but probably likely to happen at softer prices. The rand a little bit stronger um, and global markets maybe not as bullish as what they were last year. That fruit sector Apart from its, its GDP contribution, its contribution to trade is the one that, that is really strong. Um, so on screen, on the, on the bar chart, you've got the biggest agriculture and food export commodities in South Africa. And striking in that, four of the five sit in the horticultural sector. So citrus, obviously, is the big one, um, but wine also in there, grapes um, and, and palm fruit being the major ones. If you look towards market, um, the map in the background it's a fairly, fairly well-distributed market, but a big share going into Europe, um, into the European Union, UK, 
that's a fairly mature market. It's not a market where we see rapid growth going forward, but it is definitely an important market for us. If you look towards the east, um, currently about 22% of our fruit and nut products going there. Um, quite a big contribution of that is coming from nuts. Um, this is the, the, the area where we will probably be looking to most in terms of growth, um, but also the area where we need to look at our market access. We have a lot of scope there to broaden market access, to, to look at improved protocols, to mar make markets practically more accessible, and also to look at our competitive position in terms of, of tariffs. So in, in many of those countries, our main competitors have a more favorable tariff um, than what we face in those markets, which does influence our competitiveness. Of course, from a, from a horticulture export performance, um, one can't discount the role of the exchange rate. Um, it has always been an, an important factor, as it, as it is with many primary net exporting industries. Um, but in 2020, you know, the short-term performance that we saw, it was partly supported by the exchange rate, but it was also supported by, by very strong volumes um, from citrus in particular. And palm fruit also had a good, good um, season last year. So if you just compare the two lines on that chart, the green one shows um, the history and the projection for export performance in RAND terms. The dark blue one shows the same in US dollar terms. And there you can see that, that there's, there's obviously much more rapid growth in, in RAND terms, which is showing the impact of that exchange rate, um, but still positive growth being projected also in dollar terms. I think where 2020 was a strong, very strong season for citrus, many of the others had had a normal on par or, or average type season, if I can call it that. And, and many more fruit sectors are looking at strong, stronger and, and even record levels of export performance in 2021. Um, that includes grapes, it includes stone fruit, it includes palm fruit, 